the aerial cinematography is a storytelling device. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. So I think it's impossible to argue that it's a trend. Aerial cinematography has been around for five decades. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Welcome to Perspective, a podcast for wedding craves where we sit down often with a special guest and talk about our many years of experience in the wedding industry. We're talking drones with Stuart and Alina from Drone Film Guide on today's episode. All of us have an open and honest discussion about the legalities of using a drone in your work, the process you have to go through in order to become certified, and how we feel about illegal drone operators. Let's just say you're not running a smart business if you're flying illegally. We also toil over Stuart's recent troubles with the Civil Aviation Authority. It's not all negative, however, because today we'll be sharing with you more tips and tricks to improve your drone flying, as well as geeking out over the new DJI Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. So if you're thinking of upgrading, definitely continue listening for our thoughts. This podcast is sponsored by With Jack, but we'll get on to that a little bit later in the show. In the meantime, though, Greg, what are we drinking? We are drinking... A Merit Roasting Co. coffee, all the way from America, mm-hmm. and it's a Shata Geisha. <laughs> <laughs> when we, These when coffees was, need to get better names. When I was buying this, Simon was like, oh, choose one that's easy to say on the podcast, and then I looked at it and went, Shata. <laughs> <laughs> but I chose it because it's a Geisha, and I'm a coffee geek, and that's quite a sort of rare bean variety, so... I chose that. Well, thank you. Uh, just a moment ago, we were talking about how we should keep the podcast more mature, Greg. So I'm glad you've, you've you brought that right back down to the normal standard of the podcast. So guys, hello. Hiya. We're here with uh, White Balloon. Films. Thank you for having us. I interrupted mm-hmm. you saying hello. I'm I know, so sorry. I you know, first word and I've loved it. I <laughs> started. It was me. I'm a rude host. Pleasure to be here. How was your weekend? It was... It feels like it was very long ago, actually. Well, I mean, strictly speaking, the weekend starts tomorrow. It's Friday. So last well, weekend, this is yeah, true. Yeah, that, that is <laughs> this is true. Yes, yes. And I don't have. Yeah, how, how was last, last weekend? weekend? Were you out shooting? Oh yeah, uh, yes, we were actually. Uh, we had a we had an elopement in Glencoe, um, oh, oh, which nice. was pretty awesome. A well timed question because that makes us sound like we've had a much more. Uh, varied and interesting year than than we have. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much like every weekend, Glencoe elopements. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was freezing. It's starting to get very very cold. <laughs> it was a little bit chilly under all our layers uh, as we stood next to a girl in a wedding dress and uh, a groom. Uh, they did so well. Equally underdressed. Yeah, I always feel bad when I'm there with jackets and gloves on, but mm. they're enjoying it. I think. Well, I kind of figured that. I mean, when I started putting my hood up and I had like 13 layers on and all that kind of stuff, I was like, I'm not going to feel guilty about this. You know, this is, uh, was my choice to stand out here in yeah. the middle of Glencoe in September. Well, I kind of feel like films and photos don't really represent the temperature, which is which is really weird. You know, on the day, it can be really freezing, but if the video or photos are really nice... It doesn't matter. Same for the heat as well. Editing a few sweat fests from the summer and yes. it doesn't really, doesn't really come up in the video apart yeah. from uh, uh, if you see some kind of shiny people. But it's, uh, yeah, nature of things. Mm-hmm. W- was there a photographer there with you this weekend? There was. Yes. Who was it? Uh, Claire Juliet Payton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't think I recognise the name. I do not nope. recognise that name. <laughs> who who is she? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes, her. There. Does she... Does she have a different surname, I think, I though? I think her name is Rawlinson or something. But yeah. maybe she, I don't know. I get all mixed yeah. up. Um, um, <coughs> when people get married, they have kind of, they're stuck with their business name, but they kind of don't want to change that. But they yeah. change surnames kind of situation. It might mm-hmm. have been one of those. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like I should know. Uh, well, we've had a very busy week because we have been shooting a wedding in Austin, Texas, yes. which is very fun. How did that go? It went swimmingly. As in I was swimming with sweat, because it's so hot over there. <laughs> it's so hot. Actually, I lie a little bit. The, there was a thunderstorm. It kind of cleared up the humidity. It wasn't yeah. too bad. I was fully expecting to have to deal with really harsh sun and play with sort of shapes with that. But it was overcast on the day, which yeah. was 
pretty good. Mm-hmm. And it was still roasting hot though. Luckily, all the buildings are air conditioned. Air conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> so it meant indoors during the wedding. It was a lovely temperature. Mm-hmm. Would you, are you are you pleased with the results? Would you say you've come back with some fantastic footage that's going to result in a beautiful highlights and drive your business to the next level? Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, it's good. We sort of we were there for a few days beforehand, so we made sure to meet up with a couple, and because we were there, we offered just to do a sort of pre-wedding shoot because we might as well. Like we had a spare day, wanted to meet up with them, sort of break the ice, and we'd met them before at a wedding that they were guests at. Mm-hmm. We wanted to sort of socialise with them, have a coffee and get a few sort of extra couple shots. Yeah, real time face to face instead of over Skype or whatever it was. So yeah, we went around they they took us around some of their favourite spots in Austin. Um one of the ones that I changed because they, they wanted to go to two parks, but I thought, well, aesthetically you wanna have a very you wanna have a variety of locations, that's right, Greg. So we got taken to the top of the Whole Foods, which doesn't sound great. Again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound great, but there's obviously uh, a park, and um, unfortunately, had they, they were building at the time. So, although it was a, a favorite spot for the couple, wasn't yeah, too the great. View, the view of the cityscape had been changed a bit because Austin's growing at such fast pace that mm. there's new skyscrapers being built and blocking the view a wee bit. Yeah, which is fine. We got to play with the the reflections and stuff like that and the trees over there. Um, but then we we moved on to a graffiti park, which, what's it called? Hope Galleries. Hope Galleries. And it's literally just, is it a, an abandoned building? What is it? Don't really know. It seems to be it, the beginning foundations of a building, but they've just stopped. And now people just use it for, like a canvas for graffiti. So not but, knowing a whole lot about Texas, I thought that would have a very, you'd be in national parks with tremendous scenery and mountains and maybe i'm completely mistaken but this has got a very urban feel to it then from yeah what you're saying. much more yeah. of an urban wedding well uh, i imagined I mean, a barn with line dancing in texas ah, yeah, 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 was yeah. there some line dancing well, i'll tell you what <laughs> Not an urban wedding, <laughs> we, we were staying in south congress one of the popular streets for all the hipster people anyway there's this bar called the continental bar very famous it's been there for a long time people still play at it anyway we decided to go in and I take a seat. We're watching this uh, country band, and about ten minutes go in, and Greg is dragged to the dance floor <laughs> by this random lady. <laughs> and I, I took some pictures, but they're all kind of blurry and it's very dark. But he's just there for for a good couple yeah. of dances with this random lady who has Ma- dragged him up, Mary from LA. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, this is great news. She's like, "Do you want to dance?" I was like. When else am I going to dance to a country music band in Texas? Absolutely. Yeah, Might as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So it both but entertained I was me. Just demolishing the dance. That was like <laughs> you horrible. Were. The old river dance skill. There was, there, was people, <laughs> did there was people up there who are like professional dancers. They were spinning people and mm. dipping them and everything. And I was trying to do left, left, right. <laughs> left, left, right. Mm. And I was still getting that wrong. <laughs> it's like, it was oh, line he's so dancing, modest, isn't it's, he? He's so modest. It wasn't it's line dancing. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it was a if it was a line dance, that would have been quite good. But it it wasn't yeah. quite line dance stuff. Yeah, that was good fun. But yeah, that both it, it, like entertained me, but equally terrified me at the same time because then I thought I was going to get dragged up, <laughs> and I just didn't want to be dragged up on the dance floor. Mm. Um, so how long were you there for? It was pretty much six days. Mm-hmm. So we had a day and a half before the wedding and then the wedding was a Saturday and then we'd two and a half days after it no mm. a day and a half after yeah, it yeah a day and a half we went to the rehearsal dinner as well we weren't filming it we just went along just to be, network just to be nice and meet the guests yeah. sort of. I always feel hand out business cards it's good to <laughs> get to know as many guests as you can especially on destination weddings because then it sort of breaks the ice and when you're there the next day at the wedding they're sort of used to you Mm. and it's a bit easier like yeah that. it was and that was hard because obviously what, what you want to be is like inconspicuous mm. but being there everyone knew us as the bloody fantastic videographers all brought away from the other side of the world Absolutely. and I'm like oh yeah, my god the pressure is like unreal high expectations. and it was like, like oh my god the couldn't pressure. find anyone in the whole of United States <laughs> <laughs> like, that means yeah. you're literally the, better than everyone in the whole of America the, pla- <laughs> the planner at the venue was like oh 
when she told us it was you guys, I checked your website and I was like, oh my God, they're amazing. Can't wait to see your film. And we're just standing there going, oh shit, the pressure's on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it should be good. I introduced you as White Balloon, but technically you're not here as White Balloon. Ah. Who are you as individuals and who is your company? Who is your company? What is your company? Give us your life history. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I skipped your names at the beginning, so that was that was host host skills 101 missed there. Well, what what are we? Um we're a couple. <laughs> husband and wife team. Yes. Wife and husband team. Uh behind White Balloon Films wedding business uh and we have a commercial slash corporate business called Captain Cornelius Films. Uh, and through that, we also run a YouTube channel called Drone Film Guide, where we make drone filmmaking tutorials uh, using the last few years of our extensive library of drone footage and giving that a new lease of life, teaching drone cinematography skills so that people can learn to fly like a filmmaker. So we've got a few things going on, and we've done this the last... In total, for the last eight or so years, basically, since you graduated from the University of the Arts in... London. In London, in the Big Smoke. Mm. Um, So although I'm talking right now, it all started with Alina's... uh, Well, that's true. I moved up to Glasgow for Stuart. Um, Did a few... For Stuart. (laughs) (laughs) Did a few music videos and... I'm a little bit happy about it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I am, I am. Okay, yeah. Thrill. <laughs> We're all very happy for that. You can't see your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> True. So did a few bits and bobs, and then uh, I think it must have been Stuart who came up with the idea of wedding videos because we had our wedding in 2012 and uh, didn't get a videographer, obviously, as you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> They cost at least five hundred pounds, and I thought that was a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we started looking around and seeing quite fantastic uh, filmmaking skills in the wedding cinematography wor- world, and thought that was quite interesting. Um, wanted to try it, so here we are today, <laughs> many years later. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And in the meantime, the commercial business kind of grew. Kind of took a back seat, but we've still got some stuff going on there. And then t- almost two years ago, we launched the YouTube channel, uh, which originally was meant to promote the commercial business um, to draw attention to our non-wedding skills. But as it happened, has become something in its own right, um, where we promote and sell uh, it our drone cinematography education, um, mm. or the drone cinematography masterclass, the understated <laughs> drone cinematography <laughs> masterclass. Um, so essentially, like um, like many who have gone before us on YouTube, the YouTube has become a platform by which uh, you provide free content to then sell your paid-for content. Mm. Um, and as long as you don't go on too much about your paid-for content and the free content still has some value, um, you can kind of have the two going side by side. So that's where we are as of today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the mask class does look ace because uh, I, I had never checked out before. Yeah, so I went to your Facebook and I was like, oh yeah, that's it right there. That does yeah, look yeah. pretty damn good. No, it was a big big effort, big yeah. piece of work last winter. So the, the traditional kind of seasonal downtime after the weddings it never really happened for us. And yeah. what was meant to be a It never a happens small, every year. No, there was also <laughs> a big idea to come up with something new. But um, it was meant to be a fairly small exercise and ended up taking months because we figured that when people are used to consuming your content for free, if you're going to ask them to pay for something, then you really, really have to give them a reason to. Um, so it has to be has to be good and thought through. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah, it's gone well. It's gone well. Making money doing it. So, so keep our fingers crossed that continues for a little bit longer. Absolutely. Well, that's what, that's what it's for. Yeah. Support yeah. our families, feed our children. <laughs> yeah. All that good stuff. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so buy that masterclass, people. Buy it. So, I want to say, was that last month, I noticed uh, a Facebook comment that you had posted. Um, an incident with the, C A A. Um, you were very passionate in that post. I don't know if you remember the post, but I'm sure you remember the C A A. How's that going? C A A. For anyone who doesn't know, the Civil Aviation Authority, the Grand Master of Safety in our skies, who 
gives licenses out to commercial operators like ourselves to fly the drone. It's 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 going. It's 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 a work in progress. <laughs> so every year, as a drone operator, you have to not only do you have to in your initial stages go through a training process, an expensive and time-consuming training process to be licensed, you have the privilege to charge for your aerial video services, but then annually you have to renew it. At uh, well, it goes up every year, but it's pushing two hundred pounds now, and um, yeah, it's difficult to difficult to make a case for the merits of 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 that exercise. In all honesty, but I'm sure I'm I'm sure it's there for a good reason, and. In in the not too distant future, after approximately two months of uh, back and forwards with the CAA, with the most preposterous emails you can possibly imagine, I'm sure we will will have it all cleared up, and we'll continue on our merry journey as licensed commercial drone operators. <laughs> yeah. So so what was the specific issue that they had? Uh, forgive me, Alina. I'm going to be talking about this one then because this has been my. Uh, I know. Do, I don't mind. Do, uh, <laughs> I'll keep it brief. I see. He's the angry one then. <laughs> Well, you know, oh, you haven't seen me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when there's, you know, you know, everyone's got their own little annoyances in life, so it's good to have someone to take it out on. And in my case, it's been the CAA um, of late. Um, I think it just always comes at the wrong time, the busiest time of the year, where you know that is the last thing you want to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's never a good time for for for. Um, administrational failure yeah. what you would <laughs> consider a load of nonsense anyway you have to resubmit an operations manual uh, which is some 50 page document in which you outline your incredibly detailed procedures uh, for how you deal with safety and blah de blah de blah and we did uh, as was requested and uh, one of their administrative lackeys came back with a whole bunch of criticisms about terminology that hadn't been changed correctly and mm -hmm. just utterly preposterous and is this uh, is this something you need to do every year yes okay. you need to update yeah, cool. it with the current sort of standards is that right Cur current standards which change every year yeah. mm -hmm. um and i'm ju just so you know i am playing the other side here just for the listeners who might not know this information yeah, but of course yeah. we are licensed as well so of we do course. know this so information you know but like these guys, you leave it up to me to deal with all that admin and <laughs> I communicating do, I, with the CA. I, 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 I do leave that up to you. Everyone's but got uh, their strengths, don't they? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine is so, sending offensive emails to the CAA. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's just a big administrative um, silly business. The, the, the long and short of it is that when you've been through the process much as you keep trying to tell yourself it's there for a reason and that safety is their number one concern, it's very hard to arrive at that conclusion when their obsession is with terminology. Um, and in in one case, after about five attempts to get this thing passed, um, your use of the English language as well, <laughs> um, not to mention all the things that they change from year to year. Yeah, uh, The whole process is, is quite frustrating. And my point is... To, to these people is that the red tape is directed at folk that don't need to be convinced of the merits of safety because we, there's about 4,000 people in the UK registered to fly a drone commercially we are the ones that have gone to the trouble, uh, yourselves you know, yep. included, mm. and the great expense hassle of going through this process um, and as a consequence that makes you feel quite protective about the industry and it makes you take a dim view of those who operate without the license and etc 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 because you keep telling yourself that you're not an idiot for spending all that money on this process <laughs> you tell yourself that it was for a good reason uh, mm. and uh, when you go through this uh, uh, bureaucratic nightmare it becomes difficult to stick to that conclusion and mm -hmm. feel positive about the whole exercise. But the thing is that they don't really have a way of monitoring people who do have the license and people who don't. So essentially, people who don't have the license uh, can kind of do whatever they want as long as they don't attract, you know, police yes. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Mm. So um, they don't have to spend money. They don't have to waste their time every single year. So... Um, doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, the whole thing is, is it's now quite difficult to make the case why as a commercial operator you should be licensed because let's say the two of you weren't licensed and we are competing on a fairly evil, comp competing, I don't see us as competing, but you know, we're, we're competing yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, for wedding it, yeah. work or, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, that's yeah. fine. But if it's a level playing field, that's fine. But if you don't have the license, that means you're not paying £500 a year for insurance. You didn't pay 200 quid for your for your renewal, you didn't pay fifteen hundred pounds for the training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's say you can offer cheaper prices than us. Yeah. That becomes unfair. 
There's mm. no reporting mechanism for that. Uh, the entire enforcement of this whole thing has been outsourced to the police, and rightly so, the police have significantly better things to do than come around and see you guys yeah. and say, hey guys, you took an extra 500 quid for flying a drone at a wedding. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it's yeah. the, the whole, we're worried about people that are flying too high, flying close to airports, flying over cities where it's dangerous. Rightly so. That's where the rules should be enforced. So as a consequence, the CAA's contribution is entirely, arguably, pointless regulatory exercise. And as the law gets stricter, as it is, because some of these regulations are now getting passed into law so that all of us are bound by the 400 foot rule or whatever it is, one kilometre from airports. I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> we're all bound by those rules. So mm-hmm. so him next door, you know, flying a drone uh, is bound by rules. So why should we pay to charge for it? We're all bound by the same laws. I don't really get why we should have yeah. to have a licence. I mean, maybe, maybe there's a fantastic reason for it, but that almost sounds like racketeering, actually. There you know, like, yeah. we go. Figure it out. So hmm. we can all fly drones on the same set of rules, but if you want to charge for it, you need a license. Yeah. Why? From my point yeah, of view, explain I feel that to me. If you're doing it for commercial, the only extra thing you should need is proper insurance to yeah. cover you for that. Because yeah, as you say, other people are flying them without any license, without any insurance, and the only time they have trouble is if they crash it and cause problems. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah, we're paying all this stuff. Like, but I suppose the insurance company needs to see your license to give you the insurance. Well, that's correct. I did yeah. check with the insurance company. Without yeah. the license, you cannot be insured. And yeah. as a professional mm-hmm. operator of anything, we should all have public liability insurance uh, as yeah. a bare minimum so that if we go and whack a, you know antique vase with a tripod at some <laughs> fancy venue, you know we're insured oh, yeah. for that. Yeah. Or go and you know, poke someone's eye out with a... Oh God knows how you do that, but I'm sure it could happen. You need to be insured, uh, so you need your drone activities insured as well. So at the moment, mm-hmm. it's, you know, the bottom line is you have to do it. So uh, yeah. to be honest with you, this is just a rant that achieves nothing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we will still have to get through the license process. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I've been certainly harassing them with you know, as many questions back to them um, as they've been sending to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they keep coming back with new stuff, the first question in my email is, so why did you not point this out previously? Uh, yeah. You know, you, you're not doing your job right. But yeah. anyway, I'm sure every industry has this kind of nonsense going on, whether it's your... One of the big problems is this is such a fast growing industry. Like if you think back to many years ago, was it five, six years ago, both of us got licensed? Probably seven. Four five, for us. Four? Is it four? Uh, but I don't so know maybe you guys, ju- but maybe four. I think we were uh, maybe a month or two after you guys. Uh-huh. Um, but oh, it's completely within that today. four years, mm-hmm. the number of licensed pilots has skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. So, I suppose it's hard on the CA that they've got to keep up with a new drone being developed every six months, thousands more fly uh, pilots every few months. So it's tough on them, but it it's got tough, to be a better but way. But maybe they charge instead for of their effort. Yeah. Yes, instead of maybe concentrating on terminology mm. uh, and something fake and shallow like that, they could concentrate more on stuff that matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're just not filling out your book right because Greg has got these problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, of course, just stirring the pot. Don't yeah, worry. Quite right. No, no, there's <laughs> always two sides to it. <laughs> I updated my operations manual quite substantially last year, but I know there's definitely new terminology that's come in since then, but then... If we get a new drone soon, we'll have to add that in Thorpe's manual. And you guys are members of the Wedding Film School, right? Are you? Are you on there on Facebook? Uh, no. Okay. So I am. There was a recent poll on it, and the question was: How many use drones for the wedding films? Legal versus illegal, mm-hmm. or subcontract out? Be honest, okay? And obviously, I mean it's a big group, but and I, there's not there's a big number, but not everyone comments on the post. So the numbers are quite low, but um, ratio-wise, I thought it was quite interesting. Legally approved, there's 45 members who put their name down. Illegally, there's 31. And then 28 don't use drones, and then two subcontract out. That's as of recording anyway. I think numbers might be higher now, but the legally versus illegally, I mean, that's a lot of illegal users. 31 to 45. Uh, so there's a lot of people. Well, it's possible as well that number's higher because people won't volunteer that information. Yeah, so y- yes, exactly. Yeah. So as many people are doing it illegally as they are yeah, mm-hmm. legally. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've had this conversation with a few photographers who are sympathetic 
to this for the people who are licensed because they feel like we should be annoyed about it. And I want to hear how you guys feel about those numbers. Alina, do you have? Does that make your blood boil, or do you not care? It used or, to. Yeah. Um, it used to at the very, very start. I think just kind of when we just went through the process and spent loads of money, but it doesn't anymore because I, I don't care too much. <laughs> I think a lot of people who actually matter in the industry um, are licensed. You know, there's there's an awful lot of people there who are, and lots of people are making a point of stating it in their kind of contracts and their small prints and uh, actually a lot of wedding venues these days are asking for all the proper That's documentation yeah. mm-hmm. um, so I don't know I mean as a, as a concept you know if we just passed the, the license which we did what four years ago or whenever yeah. we were watching quite closely to see what uh, to see what others were up to in that respect because not many people were doing it and mm-hmm. you know we've We've, it paid a lot of money and invested time into getting what we hoped would be a competitive advantage. So for the industry to then just overlook that and then prove to us that that was a waste of time and money, that would, of course, be incredibly annoying. We're quite lucky because four years have passed, so that investment has kind of averaged out over time. Yeah, uh, The business has benefited from it. Um, mm mm-hmm could even say we've built a bit of a reputation hopefully not just on the back of our drone stuff uh, <laughs> we've hopefully got more tricks up our sleeve but mm-hmm. we are kind of known for it to some extent we are known for it but actually drone cinematography is actually quite a very small part of the wedding films that we do it's just mm. shots at the end of the day uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's setting the scene uh, it's doing a few couple shots but beyond that um, you know there's so much more to the wedding film that we offer than just yeah. the drone Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no, no doubt about that. We're also very pleased slash impressed with the extent to which our local industry takes the licensing seriously. Because um, the everyone who flies a drone in, that I'm aware of in Scotland, maybe not everyone, I can think of one or two, but mm-hmm. almost everyone has the license. You know, all the kind of big names, so to speak, in yeah. wedding filmmaking in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh do anyone that we've come across down south or wherever they you know they do take it quite seriously and then a lot of people also kind of the thing that kind of shook it out a little bit as well is that it's actually very tricky to find the time to fit in a drone shot uh on on a wedding day (laughs) so a lot of people took it up um and then dropped it basically because as you said alina it's one or two shots um doesn't always add value to the wedding film uh, it uh, almost always adds stress to your day so <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people yeah. have dropped it uh, as an as a as an addition or maybe say oh we'll just get someone in if the couple really insists that we need a drone operator mm-hmm. well, we're um, quite lucky that there's two of us so when we do the couple shoot for example i go in with a camera and Stuart goes in with a drone um so we don't you know, it's it's much easier than having one operator for all of those things. I couldn't think yeah. about I couldn't think about rocking up to a wedding by myself and then going, all right, I've got to do some drone shots. I just want no to get chance. in and you know yeah. see, see see what the bride's up to, and, uh, and so on. Mm-hmm. There's kind of this thing as well with professionals where when they see other people's films, it's like there's the eye roll, and then ah, there's your there's your drone shot to establish the film. Okay, cool. We're gonna oh another. Another drone shot. All right, yeah, cool. Are we gonna are we gonna see the couple anytime soon? Like, oh, there's uh, another one. All right, cool. So yeah, the, I can see why people are kind of dropping it because it's 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 not a I'd g- feel great tool. My excitement for it is heavily dropped. Like a few years ago when I was starting out, it was like, oh, this is cool. It's a new tool that we can use. But nowadays, I'm more like. Oh, don't know if I can be bothered getting the drone. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, okay. And sometimes Simon will say, I'll oh, bring the drone for the couple shoot. Like, we'll try and get something. And I'm like, oh, but then I won't be getting other shots that I enjoy getting from ground level with my camera. Mm. Yeah, you know, so, so it's, it's a lot of effort. I think yeah. uh, sometimes people try and uh, kind of say, oh, the drone's a trend in the same way that whatever, you know, all the hundreds and one trends that happen every year and you know, 2016 or whatever was the year of the drone. I think we would argue that um, given that aerial cinematography goes back to, well, I don't know, the 60s or 70s, whenever they started mm-hmm. tagging cameras onto helicopters and given that 
almost any, certainly any action film, <laughs> opens with a drone shot. And most most Hollywood films, or certainly a lot of them, open with a kind of establish, uh, establishing shot. The aerial cinematography is a storytelling device. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. So I think it's yeah. impossible mm-hmm. to argue that it's a trend. Aerial yeah. cinematography has been around for five decades so uh, and continues to be used by Hollywood. And, and when we're kind of doubting ourselves or looking for a kind of path to kind of follow or to guide us or to clarity, we always look to Hollywood because we figure that um, they know better than we do, mm. in, in all honesty. I'm not saying you should try and make your film look like a Hollywood film, but at the same time... Why um, not? Why not? No. <laughs> we do, yeah. but I'm not saying everyone should. But at yeah. the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, they follow a certain certain kind of framework that works for them and it is continually used as a storytelling device. But like any storytelling device, if it is overdone, is going to look a bit silly and it has to contribute yeah. to the story. So mm-hmm. for Glencoe Elopement, for example, we were talking about that in the car driving home. We go to weddings and don't get the drone out. Or I mean, maybe if maybe we would not get the drone out because of weather, but if you know, we'd get an establishing shot of the venue, but then it might not come out again because it's not contributing anything. Mm-hmm. But you go to Glencoe, which is one of the most beautiful places on earth, and there's no better way of setting the scene in Glencoe than a drone shot. I mean, it just looks astonishing yeah that's mm. what drones are created drones for. were created <laughs> to <laughs> shoot glenn go <Glencoe. laughs> yeah. yeah it's absolutely yeah. epic and if a couple as our couple did fly all the way from america to elope to glencoe they want the majesty of that place captured and if we were a hollywood production company of 20 guys or whatever shooting this thing <laughs> you can guarantee they'd be looking to get some aerial shots uh, yeah. to use 100%. those as a storytelling device i think mm. also in terms of storytelling with an elopement it's quite an intimate film there's only two people it's quite closed in and claustrophobic sometimes so you need that breathing space in your story Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the drone adds to that it's like ah just breathe back get some wide scenery absolutely absolutely and in a highlights film as well because you know like we make these uh, i say we all of us here we make highlight films you know two three four five minutes long Mm -hmm. even within a short film like that you're still trying to find a way of um creating chapters within it yep um, and the drone shot is a very good way of just kind of breaking up the video or introducing a new part of the scene or just giving the audience a little breather from the vows yeah. that went before. And that's where we're kind of still learning as, as filmmakers as well as on the story side, side of things, trying to tell the best possible story in a short period of time or in a longer period of time in our feature films as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. But I think every time we go to a wedding, um, there is something in the back of our minds that goes, we should get a couple shot for um, for the YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, so essentially it works, ah, yes. oh, it works for both. Um, so we are completely motivated for two reasons. Reasons, yeah. um, not not mm. just not just the wedding. Yeah, of and there's nothing wrong with that because you're you're just thinking with with two heads in mind. You know, well, being the it, most productive you can be at whatever you're doing. Yeah. I think it benefits everyone. So why yeah. not? Yeah, and you're right that drone. It's not a trend, as you say. Like you explained that well because in 2016, yeah, that's when they boomed up and everybody mm. was like, oh, drone, drone, drone. Every shot, like Simon mentioned, was here's a drone to open my film, but it has sort of died down now and thanks to like YouTube channels like yours, it's teaching people to use it effectively rather mm. than just, oh, I'm just going to fly the drone because it's cool and I want to tell people I've got it. They're using it to tell a story or to get a cinematic shot. 100%. And, and if you compare it with, uh, you can relate these things to sliders, for example. Now, when we started off, oh, uh, we had a slider. I mean, the yeah. slider is who a didn't? Thing. You never had a slider. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Who? I'm saying who, oh, who didn't? didn't? We've who still didn't? got one over there. Yeah. If they want, trying if they to want sell to buy it. a slider, but a slider is, you know, it can create a fantastic shot. You know, it can create yeah. a reveal from behind a pillar, from behind a bouquet of flowers, or something like that. But again, you have to have some kind of basic concept of how to use it. So you would see back in the day, um, and I'm saying this now with the benefit of a lot more experience, as a, as because we, you know, we didn't start off with you know, 20 years experience. But you'd see people sliding the wrong direction. So you know, they're going from their subject <laughs> to then slide behind something and then just cut to something else, and that that doesn't really make any sense, you know, unless you're going to kind of blend it in a funky transition that fades to black in the middle or something. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a uh, it's a storytelling. Thing it keeps saying it's, it say gets that, overused in weddings, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. and now people are onto gimbals and things mm-hmm. like that, and we love the gimbals. We love you know running around with the gimbal. 
I wouldn't say we overuse it, but we do intensively use it. But mm. again, you have to be careful not to, not to go mad for that. And, yeah. Uh, well, we're uh, we're glycam, and uh, Greg always says that it's my crutch. Mm-hmm. It's my crutch. It's not yeah. always my go-to tool, because for me, it's quite versatile. You can, I can use it as a monopod if I just hook onto my belt, or if I just want to do a few laps around. It gets gets people talking, which isn't generally an exciting kind of scene gets gets a wee bit of motion in there makes it a little bit more exciting adds that a little bit of energy yeah and then i do it for the dancing as well i do it everywhere I do. Yeah, no. motion <laughs> motion is fundamental to uh to to the films and i think as well we, we try and break this down in our heads a little bit because we you know we see the trends and we see see what's happening see what people are saying and uh obviously you can have motion for the sake of motion yeah uh, which also also has its place and then you have motion for your kind of deliberate storytelling shots but the reality mm. is we're shooting weddings which are uncontrolled events we don't get to do yep. things twice and mm. sometimes you're just trying to make something fairly mundane like someone having a sip from a glass of champagne you're trying to make it look as interesting as possible and they're not always going to be framed by you know huge pillars on both sides and you can just gawk at the amazing symmetry of the shot and there's just no need for any camera movement because it's just such a beautiful artistic masterpiece it doesn't work out like that mm. most of the time so for us the motion is moving away from the drones a little bit but the motion is uh, is a way of adding visual interest um, well i think <laughs> different types of films kind of suit different techniques so action films they use a lot of handheld mm-hmm. uh, whereas personally for me i think wedding films and um glide cams or gimbals they kind of are suited quite well together mm-hmm. yeah so it's it's, uh, it's it's a stylistic choice um mm-hmm. and and there's no right or wrong but uh <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> but we've, we've yeah. got our own thing going on so we'll stick with it for now <laughs> you say there's no right or wrong okay and i'm gonna i'm gonna segue back into the the drones here oh i'm talking about drones <laughs> <laughs> people who are not licensed are wrong yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about drones, and you said this as well when you're talking about your dr- when you're applying for your license, you mentioned the drones and filming. But I'm noticing more and more that photographers are using drones, which is cool. But I wonder, do the laws still apply to them because they're not shooting film? Obviously, I know the answer. Well, anyone who's shooting well, commercially, yes. Um, uh-huh. Should mm-hmm. technically Flying should, commercially. Yeah. Okay. The theory is as soon yeah. as you're receiving any commercial gain, be it monetary or otherwise, then uh, you... Benefits in kind. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A pat on the back is commercial gain from, you know, then <laughs> then you're supposed to be licensed. Mm-hmm. So that is the theory of it, yeah. So what happens if, of the scenario, what happens if a photographer uh, who didn't use the drone charged the same and then they bought a drone and they haven't upped their price but then used the drone? What's le- like legally? Where do they stand? Well, I mean, well, argue- I think the same because then they have an edge um, on any other photographer who doesn't have the drone. But so- they've not been paid for it, so it's like, well, well, I didn't get paid for it, you know. So I'm getting my whatever. But there, uh, he- yeah. here's where the payment comes in, though. You kind of touched on it there. When I see the only reason I know they do this is because they post it on their Facebook page, and that's where. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Marketing. they have the value. So, yeah. yes, promotion. As soon as it's promotion, you do get monetary. Like, people put a value on that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh-huh. they give you money to do it. Even whether or not it's, you know, not yeah. something you've charged for before. Well, I com- I completely agree with you. So in terms of what the right and wrong of it is, the the right is, yes, you have received commercial gain because you have received marketing benefit uh, by putting a drone shot of someone lying on a tennis court or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's... Uh, so, so but yes. Technically, no one's going to chase you for it. So why? No, not no. That? But this is coming back to our previous discussion, the police are not going to knock on the door and say you put a picture up on Facebook of someone lying on a tennis court, who both of whom you know gave you your cons- gave you their consent to film them. You weren't mm-hmm. anywhere near anyone else. No one was in danger. Uh, I, 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 I pray to God that uh, the police have better things to do uh, than than chase that up. In which case, it's very hard to make the, the argument why they should get licensed. But of course, as a kind of you know outraged 
someone who has been through the process four years ago, of course they should, because uh, yeah. it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. So, so maybe yeah. in that case, maybe we're not annoyed at the people who are Doing not it. licensed, we're but annoyed at, at us <laughs> for mm. being licensed. Oh, we're annoyed at ourselves <laughs> for being stupid yeah. enough to do it in the first oh, place. Exactly. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, yes. Um, have yeah. you ever had the police called on you for droning? No. No? Have you? <laughs> yeah, we have, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Obviously, right. it was at the, have Trump term break. before on the podcast? I don't, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, we were at Turnberry, which right. is Trump Turnberry, uh-huh. and we got an establishment shot in the morning, and then we went down to the lighthouse with uh, the couple, and the guy who drives the car took us down. Uh, they didn't fly the drone then, though. We didn't fly the drone then, Yeah, no. so we got the drone shot in the morning, and it was fine. Later on in the day, we went down to the lighthouse, and there was a smoke bomb used, so there was smoke. By the time we got back to the venue, there was a police van outside, and we just sort of went in, started setting up for the first dance, not thinking anything of it. <laughs> and the guy from the venue came along, and was like, "So the police were here. It was because there was a drone earlier and the smoke. <laughs> so a local, a local phoned the police because of who owns this place. Okay, yeah. and someone, his, someone's very bored in their day to day. His son <laughs> had been staying there the night before as well, so that just added to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Trump's son." <laughs> Trump uh, Trump's, yeah, Trump's son. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the smoke is the kind of detail there. That I think uh, it was <laughs> it was the final straw that made somebody call the police. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. That's not. Yeah, okay. Well, fair enough. But you didn't get into trouble. Though. No, you were. No, it was no. all fine. He was like, luckily enough, we have. I mean, people always comment on how youthful we look. So we so we just put on that. Oh, sorry, sorry. We didn't know. All right. Uh, we won't do that next time. I'm sixteen. We, we'll be really doing. good. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So it's okay. So they kind of, the, yeah, you had to kind of explain yourself and, and well, all that. Well, he he just told the police, "Others oh, filmmakers, they were flying the drone." It's fine. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. didn't need to speak to them at all. But okay. he, he came over and said they were here because of that. All right. Okay. Well, right. I gave him a wee okay. day out. Yeah. Easy, yeah. easy job yeah. for him. Especially Legs, not much yeah. going on down there. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. Right. Anyway. You, you gave you gave a wee signal to each other there. What what were you going to say? <laughs> All right. Well. No, okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that I heard the story. <laughs> oh right. Okay. From someone else. Oh, you heard oh really? Story. Yes. Oh, I didn't hear the story. What? Oh, I who, thought who that's told what you? you were pointing. <laughs> Cinema got the police. <laughs> got no, I didn't know it was you guys. Uh, oh, I just knew that because we we were in. At Turnberry, not that long ago. Yes, okay. and I was um, waiting to hear what their story was before we owned up <laughs> to the fact that we were flying a drone at Turnberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I yeah. thought you were going to say. So okay, no, it's they're, good they're all good so with drones being flown. Yeah. I know the guy was like, "Oh, yeah. get your drone up at the lighthouse; it will look amazing." And uh, no, so. I do remember. I do remember him <laughs> saying that there was a police van not that long ago. Blah blah blah. All so, right, okay. um, mm-hmm. so there you go. <laughs> ah, yeah, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. making waves, Greg. Making waves. But then, yeah. So. Not quite often we would phone the venue and say, look, we're going to have a drone. But sometimes I get complacent and I'm like, oh, we've been here before, flown the drone, it's fine, I'm not going to bother. But that something happened at Glen Tanner recently where oh, you're we right. just arrived in the morning before going to preps, thought, right, we'll get a couple of drone shots, might as well. Um, and we were chatting to the photographer just as we were about to take off. And then the venue sort of lady came out started shouting to us and was like you're gonna fly that like yeah, yeah just gonna, just about to she's like oh you, you can't like the owner is here and he doesn't like them uh and we're like oh, we've we've got a license like if that helps and we've sort of done some research and she was like oh well send me the paperwork and then i'll get it cleared for you mm-hmm. so there and then i just emailed the paperwork over and within like an hour she was like right you're good to go yeah and that, so that like, did you have happened. time to do it? Yeah, so oh, we yeah, got it yeah. later yeah. in the day. But that also happened at the Secret Herb Garden in Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. So actually, the license has come in very useful this year. So on, you shouldn't have to put it onto venues, but maybe they do need to get stricter. Someone mm. mentioned it earlier, but mm. if they start asking people more often to show their qualifications, yeah, that yeah, would well. help. But it shouldn't have to come on to them to be enforcing things like that. Mm. No, I guess not. I guess not. Because yeah. yeah. we could easily just, like, oh, we, we don't have a drone, and then sometime during the day, just walk off into another field and just fly over unawares. Oh. Well, do you know what? The good thing is the new drones are quite quiet. 
Ah, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> good, good for who? <laughs> good for everyone, because we've had situations where we've had, like what you've said, it sounded like that lady was quite polite. But, yeah, she um, was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sometimes, you know, just, just people just, you know, they've read something in a newspaper about drones <laughs> dropping drugs into prisons or something. They're like, oh, drones are bad. <laughs> like, okay. yeah. Or standing here, in, you know, right in, you know, in full view, do you think we're trying to, you know, get up to no good? Yeah. Mm. And, you know, we give someone an excuse to say no or an opportunity to say no for whatever yeah. reason and uh, they tend to, tend to take it if they're uh, of that frame of mind so we try and just you know sneak about we feel like we're we, you know, to some extent you feel like a bit of a kind of like you have to sneak about even though you're doing absolutely nothing wrong yeah but it's it's time consuming to answer questions and mm-hmm. answer to anyone who might want to see your paperwork <laughs> even yeah. though they're just a member of a, of the public you know Thinking they're doing the right thing. Oh, well, we yeah. the vigilante drone police. Oh, we, out. yeah, we, we've we've had the old vigilante uh, lady come up to us. Yeah, uh, from time to time. But yeah, yeah. the woman at Glen Tanner was awesome. Like she mm-hmm. just said, if you email me your paperwork, I'll get it sorted. So I had to like work out how to get something off a of Dropbox on my phone to email them. Mm. <laughs> Did it, and then yeah, within an hour, she was like, right, I've spoke to the owner. He's looked at your paperwork. He's cool with it. Just don't go over that direction because there's like livestock or something it's like yep yeah, no problem yeah, wasn't going there anyway well, see that's what it comes down to I mean much as the whole uh, regulation thing is annoying and much as we remain very frustrated by uh, the pedantic nature of it that clearly has nothing to do with safety it is in theory there for a good reason because yeah. those of us who are licensed uh, and therefore take it all a little bit more seriously we know not to chase animals with the drones we know not to fly up to people's windows we know yeah. not to fly yeah. over crowds of people um, and and many people don't know that. And um, best thing I saw, the best one I saw was on a group. Uh, there'll be no names here, but a very prominent uh, photographer in Scotland. You know, the, the drone subject was coming up, uh, and this guy was like, "I don't know the rules, uh, therefore they don't apply." Uh, now, <laughs> oh. I'm, I, I'm paraphrasing, but that was wow. essentially his point. Yeah, ignorance uh, to, ignorance does not yeah, work here. I don't know the rules, therefore they don't apply to me. Uh, was his point? And he's just like, "Oh man, you're an idiot." Uh, and and it's people like that that kind of spoil yeah. it for everyone and yeah. end up and result in us getting a hard time. Um, so I mean, having had this conversation, there are a lot of reasons to not even bother with a drone. So if you're a photographer, you might get a drone and do that whole kind of tennis court shot, which is cool. But mm-hmm. then you're probably quickly going to run out of ideas because you just ripped that off someone else anyway. And then you're going to sell your drone because you realize it's too much hassle. Yeah. Uh, on the video side, in, unless you're working as a partnership, you're going to have other considerations on the day. Um, and you might not be finding that you're able to charge more for all that effort as well. And if you're not able to get that into your price why are you going to give yourself that headache? So I think for a lot of reasons, um, it's the competitive edge that we thought we might get and it might last for a very short, let's say for the sake of argument, we did get a competitive edge four years ago. I think it's lasted a lot longer than we anticipated because mm-hmm. the whole drone thing for all the stuff yeah. that we've just talked about really is a pain. So unless you're making it stick and unless you're making it, ultimately we're doing this to get paid, most of us, unless you're actually seeing that in your price, then... No reason to do it, unless you're a martyr. And you're right, a lot of people that we know in Scotland and the UK are sticking to it. If they've not went through the licence, they're not bothering. Or they'll ask their friend who is licensed to come along. So Yeah. 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 I would be careful, though. If if something does happen and you crash your drone onto someone and you get sued, you will lose your business Mm. and you will probably lose your house. Probably not because you've got a business name and you're a limited company. But Isn't that what the insurance is for? Yes. Yeah, but unless you're licensed. <laughs> Only if you've got the license. Oh, yeah. okay, right. I see so, what you mean, yeah. Unless you're really scary. Okay, so we're limited companies because we're, you know, high and credible businesses are sitting in this room with our yep. limited yeah. companies. But the solo yeah. operator. If you're a sol- oh, yeah. no. sole yeah. trader. I would, yeah. be, I would not be doing it if I was not under yeah. a limited company. I wonder company. how many of these sole operators probably don't even have basic public liability insurance. I hope. Well, I would hope you do. And if you do not, and you're in the UK, with Jack has got you covered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is with Jack an insurance company? Yes, it's Ashley Baxter's insurance company. Ah, right. Oh, okay. Of so yes, Very good. Uh, and they are the sponsors of the show. With Jack was designed from the ground up and is tailored specifically for creatives. Whether you provide a service like design, development, or photography, or offer advice to clients. 
with Jack is for you. It's focused on creatives. Insurance shouldn't be complicated, so with Jack has made every step easy. You'll deal with one form and talk to one Jack as you sign up, get covered, and move on with your day. With Jack is all about bespoke insurance for creatives. Simple. That doesn't mean more forms are fast, it means less. It's not about endless features and stale service. It's about one solid policy and the personal touch. Bye bye, unnecessary fuss. Hello, creative friendly insurance. Be a confident creative. So, you mentioned earlier about the new drones getting quieter. Mm. There's obviously been at least two new drones recently, and I know you've done some videos on them. What's your overview of those new drones, the DJI? I love it. Pro 2. Yeah, yeah. The Mavic 2, 2 Pro, Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. Did I get those right? It's correct, Simon. Uh-huh. Thank you very Before much. Before Stuart uh, goes on his journey about no, love. No, no, you can watch the video. I'll keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just a brief overview because obviously okay. there's a couple yeah. of videos at least out there you've got. I don't know if your audience is going to be suitably interested in the nuances of, uh, of that. I'm personally, as a cinematographer, oh, as a cinematographer <laughs> I'm yeah. very impressed by the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, it's just really the quality <laughs> is just so much better. Uh, I think it's up and above and beyond uh, anything that we've certainly owned. We we don't didn't have Mavic Pro. We didn't have Mavic mm-hmm. Pro. We didn't have the Phantom Four Pro, which right. is probably yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah what what, what, dra- what drones have you owned in the past? Uh, Phantom Two was the first one. Mm-hmm. Phantom, Phantom Two was the GoPro. Then we went to Phantom Four Standard, which yes. is two years old now. Mavic Air. And then, <laughs> yes, that certainly was that not good for a couple of months. <laughs> uh, it was. It, it wasn't better than our Phantom Four, right. so yeah. that's why no. we, were, we were underwhelmed. Uh, it was portable. Um, very portable, which is why we bought it. But the quality certainly, it's not a. It's very unfair to compare it to a much more professional yeah. drone, uh-huh. basically. So the, or doing so the it. two pro blows the four out the water. Is it that good? It blows the 4 standard out of the water right. and seemingly is on a par with the Phantom 4 Pro. But in a more compact size. But in a more compact size. Mm-hmm. So that's that seems to be where you're at. So assuming you are so inclined to spend over a £1,000 on a drone, then you have the choice between the Phantom 4 Pro, which is fairly large, and the Mavic 2 Pro, which is fairly small. Yes. But of course... Simon and Greg, it's what you do with it that counts, not uh, <laughs> not the drone itself. Much like a a camera, you could put a very expensive camera in the hands of someone that doesn't know what they're doing with it, and it won't get great results. And you know, mm-hmm. you can put a point and shoot in the hands of an expert, and they will get beautiful shots. Indeed, yeah. Which is why, if you want to learn more about this, <laughs> you can check out our masterclass <laughs> link yes. in the show notes. Uh, yeah. yeah, link in the description. But it's true. That's what you do with it that counts. So, uh, but you know, when you get to a level where you've been doing it a while and you want to have a piece of equipment that kind of matches uh, where you are at, uh, in your journey as a filmmaker, and having the flexibility to color grade something into. Uh, correct exposure. So we shoot a lot of white dresses. So yeah. mm-hmm. a white dress standing in the sunshine. Uh, we can't afford to have that blown out like a little kind of fluorescent uh, <laughs> light in the middle of your composition. It looks ridiculous. So as a consequence, you have to kind of underexpose the whole image a little bit with a view that you're going to maybe bring the midtones back in post. And if you don't have a camera on your drone that allows you to do that uh, without introducing huge amounts of noise, mm. then it's really not going to meet your expectations. Yeah. Um, so there are limitations, but uh, of course everyone in this room is at that stage where that matters to them, but others might not give monkeys. And if you're a photographer, you can just take raw photos and cover up for all your inadequacies <laughs> as a creative. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and no one cares, because no one knows. So you have fantastic flexibility on all of those drones as a photographer. Mm. But that's a whole other subject. <laughs> always always been jealous of photographers, because they all mm. they always... Well, one thing I always complain about how much how much dynamic range a certain camera has, and compared to any kind of video camera, photographers complain about dynamic oh, range all the time. Oh, really? All okay. the time. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. Oh, <laughs> it's like you could you yeah, could yeah. literally have a uh, a completely underexposed image. It's just black on the screen. You 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 boost a raw image in 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 post. 
You make it black and white. There you go. Yeah. Creative. <laughs> Unbelievable. Stop, yeah. com- stop complaining, damn photographers. My white balance was on 15,000 Kelvin. <laughs> oh, I'll just make it black and white anyway. Yeah. <laughs> What's Kelvin, It's not by right, the way? black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting in sports mode the whole day. I don't know why I got 40,000 photos back from the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Everyone else heard you, that's for sure, with the shutters going on. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about tips and tricks for people who are licensed. Of course. <laughs> for all those who aren't, you bad people. Yeah. Stop listening. <laughs> stop, steal- stop stealing our secrets. You're not allowed to watch Drone <laughs> yeah, Film School. Banned from, drone Film yeah, Guide. Drone tr- banned from the YouTube. So obviously, please go to Drone Film Guide and watch all of the videos there. Um, even if you don't give them money, which I highly recommend you do for their masterclass, but they've got a whole load of content, and every every view counts. It does. Um, think of that ad sense, guys. It does. Every, <laughs> every advert that we get to show you. So let's go back onto these tips and tricks. Okay. So can you give any people who are new to drones or maybe who have flown drones that need some advice or anything? Oh. Where you, to need, begin? you need someone wearing a red dress standing on the edge of a cliff. Someone wearing a red <laughs> long dress. curly hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to always do this with your wife, so you have someone to film in somewhere interesting, then it makes for a much more interesting shot. Mm-hmm. So not just uh, filming subjects is good. Uh, which yeah. are we? Are we? Are we limiting this to weddings? We'll keep it wedding related as a. This isn't. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I should have. I, I think. Uh, huh, I think I picked up. This is a wedding-related podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Generally speaking, brides don't wear red dresses, but it's good. The reason. Uh, the reason from filming with a drone at a wedding is good is because you have a subject. So you have a person to stand in front of a building, or to stand in a Victorian garden, or to stand on the lawn outside a, a country house, or whatever it is, and that creates uh, layers in your shot. It creates. Depth. Um, you have you can shift the eye from the subject, let's say the couple standing there to the building by tilting up and revealing the building, or tilting down and revealing the couple. You can slide from behind a tree um, and reveal the subject and reveal the background as well. So you can create a much more interesting shot when you're not just shooting landscapes all the time. Mm. But I think in terms of tips, there's a, there's a few that there's a few that spring to mind. Up. Apologize if I I got this kind of printed in my head from doing the YouTube channel. So I'll... remember to press the record button. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one, and that's probably the most important one. Yeah, I've Cor- never done that on the drone before. You've forget, never you've never not pressed record. Remember not on the drone. You've, no, you've never mm. pressed the record button. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! That is, remember that's... to have a memory card in the camera. We've oh. done that once. Oh yeah, yeah where we was... took off, got like twenty meters away, and then we're like. There's no memory card. <laughs> yeah. Memory, internal There's memory. Internal That's memory. a new thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Someone have internal memory. Okay, so pressing record is very, very important. And maybe it's just me, but when you're rushed and when you're stressed, because it's never enough time yeah. to to um to do these things at a wedding. So it's very easy to not press record. It sounds utterly foolish, but yeah. it does, doesn't it? When you but say it, it loud, but it's, it's so easy. easy to not press record. Yeah. So there's a few tips. The first one is don't just fly as high as you can because uh, just for the sake of it, because generally speaking, the higher you get, the less interesting things get, unless mm. you're shooting, not even if you're shooting Glencoe again, you know, you want to be in a scene. You don't want to be on top of it, looking down on buildings or looking down on people's heads. You want to be in that scene. So flying i've said this already but you know it comes up a lot with a drone flying from behind trees because they're quite tall but not too tall yeah perfect way of adding depth and if the trees if if you've got some something close to your drone it creates a sense of motion and that's so much more interesting um and again you, you can't you can't sometimes you just you can't teach people this stuff because they will just shoot the top of buildings you know they'll just shoot mm-hmm. down and, and look at a roof of a building and that's really nine times out of ten not an interesting way to to shoot a building even when you're shooting a mountain range from up above it just looks flat whereas if you're much lower down you get the parallax effect and yeah. the movement and yeah you want to create layers much more interesting well, what would you recommend for people like hd slow motion or 4k normal generally speaking there's not enough motion in a drone shot to merit putting it in slow motion unless you're flying close enough to someone that you can really see the level of motion um there might not be a reason to do that i do remember a few kind of i don't know just quite memorable shots that we have done that were slow motion and that 
were just you couldn't shoot them any other way. Um, you know, th- it was very windy. The couple were very relaxed, and they were actually doing a bit of dancing on the beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bride's dress was very flowy, so it just worked out really well. Um, and even the sun was low enough so that it was throwing nice big shadows on the beach mm-hmm. uh, from the couple. So the slow motion shot was just perfect for that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Uh-huh. Um, but most of the time, the dress doesn't flow. Um, the couple doesn't dance. <laughs> There's no waves that might break in slow motion. And therefore, you've put your drone down to slow motion, but... There's no reason for it, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, well, the other thing is, well, it, you have to be very close to... These drones, typically speaking, until recently, are uh, filmed on very wide-angle lenses. Yes. So it's very, very difficult to get close to a subject, safely at least, um, so that they fill the frame enough that it's it's going to be interesting yeah. to see them moving moving in slow motion. And that's kind of another another tip, definitely in a wedding context, is that... Most people are probably aware of the notion that these drones fly themselves. You know, you can take them off and let go of the sticks and they hover. And they have all kinds of fantastic intelligent flight modes and all that kind of stuff that basically, in inverted commas, do it for you. They almost make it too easy. <laughs> they make it too easy. But it would probably be fair to say that almost everything that we shoot on a drone is filmed manually. Uh, because when you look back at the flight time, it's a three or four minute flight. And if we have a good shoot, then we can make it look in the video and you might think other maybe some of our peers look at these videos and go oh they, they just that's okay for them they stood with the couple for an hour and did that <laughs> it's not it's 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 four minutes under the most tremendous pressure uh typically with a photographer doing their best to kind of accommodate you but you know still somewhere in the back of their head thinking oh you know i should be taking photos right now. yeah this is eating mm-hmm. into the couple shoe and they're saying mm-hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah 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 I'm and then gonna, the, not going to get the, into that, but <laughs> the the venue uh, coming up, going, they need to be back for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we wait patiently for five minutes at the end. It's all lined up with the yeah. couple. Everyone knows what's going on, and then you know because the photography overruns or whatever. Blah blah blah. So the point is, you need to be very skilled actually to pull off some of these shots. I'm not saying that I'm very skilled, but I've certainly had a lot of practice and yeah. have the skills required. Uh, because you can't do these things automatically under that kind of time pressure. You just have to respond. So a typical shoot, for example, would be, hey, you guys, right, you run up, the drone's buzzing away already. You've just finished, Alina's just finished doing some some couple shoot shots. The photographer's patiently waiting, but in all likelihood still hovering about, you know, over your shoulder shooting, you know, or still in the shot. And like, are they like, am I okay here? No, you're not okay there. <laughs> Stand yeah. where we're standing and then you're okay. Uh, so there's a lot going on. It's a very difficult scenario to to deliver. So you get them to walk up and down the road a couple of times, maybe stand there while you do a big pull-away shot, and that is it. Um, that is it. So you really have to have a clear strategy for what you're going to do there. Otherwise, yeah. those minutes are going to vanish and you're going to get absolutely nothing. Yeah. Make yeah. a shot from every single movement. So let's say you've got one shot in mind and another shot in mind but the time in between, you can still do a shot, whether yeah. it's, it might not even involve the couple. You can just lift it, point it up to the horizon and just do an extra shot while you're doing it. So <laughs> yeah. because the time is so limited and actually the battery time is also quite limited, uh, might as well make every second count. Yeah, if you're flying from one point to another to do two separate shots, you might as well try and do it in a controlled manner to get... Yeah something that could be usable yeah yeah, yeah. You know, talking about it you know this whole kind of bringing it back but it's hard going it's, it's really hard going i don't know if you yeah. have the same experience but yeah it, it's jamming that little couple shoot in in particular yeah is is very very difficult i remember shooting with the curries um up in aberdeenshire uh the coos cathedral we had taken a couple away and uh in the morning we went back to where they were getting ready but on the ground i had noticed this this like little maze on, like and it made this very interesting shape in the ground. So I remember getting the couple lying down there, and I wanted a very like coming up and the the drone to rotate. I couldn't get, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. And then when I did get it, the couple were like they looked at the drone, and I'm like, ah, oh, no. So I had to I had to go over to the couple and be like, All right, guys, if you just um just 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 keep doing what you're doing, just pretend we're not here. And it took it took about five minutes. To get the couple there posed 
and then I could see the photographer, like I could see Chris and Jill being like, "Yeah, l- luckily we're good friends I w- with them." I want to, so. yeah, like we- we've got to move on. And I'm here like, trying to get the shot. I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is not working." Yeah. Until it did work, and then it was like up and go. But I, I felt really bad holding everyone up yeah, to yeah. get that shot. Um, but you know what? You shouldn't feel bad because because you're doing your job, and you probably teed them up, and they probably booked you because of your drone expertise and they wanted that as part of the mm. service and all that kind of stuff you and, shouldn't feel and bad. it looked ace by the way and it, it looked, looked, it looked good ace. it was worth it in the end well that is good um the reality however is that um the couple have never done this before so they don't know what to expect and um weirdly as well sometimes we find that people that have booked us very very specifically like we want white balloon films um and you know you, this isn't standard but let's say you know we're the first thing they book so let's take a best case or you know extreme situation it's like mm-hmm. right White balloon films, and it does happen from time to time. So that, you know, they well, the, be- the elopement couple booked us first. Oh yeah, yeah, everything was yeah. booked before yeah. before anything else. And they and they were great from start to finish. But sometimes on a, on a wedding's a very kind of intense, proper wedding, full wedding's very intense for the couple. So much as they want you to, you know, perform to your best of your abilities, you still find them saying, "Oh, um, you know, I've got to get back for something." Or, and, yeah, and and all we're asking for is a kind of three minutes. Of yeah. their time, um, and this is on the back of you know a couple shoot that just took an hour and a half, and you're squeezing in. So when you've got photographers rolling their eyes in the background, it's really uh, it's really quite annoying. Uh, We're not it, asking for three minutes. We're offering three minutes <laughs> our true. time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, when you like, it's only after when you go back and they're like, "Wow, look at that shot," and it's like, "That's exactly what we're trying to tell you." Like, this is why we did this at the end. Like th- yeah. those three minutes were. For this shot and it looks that good yeah. or sometimes actually you get a couple where one person is really int- into their video and the other <laughs> one couldn't care less and just wants to go and get drunk mm. yeah <laughs> so. it's just the nature of the job um yeah. and that's that's what you need to kind of remind yourself of but that's uh, you know it's a good thing though in, in a way we've so the positive is we actually this is a positive because this is and it's the same for the couple shoot as well because not to get into that whole kind of photographer versus videographer thing but you know, you're, there's limited time and there is an assumption in the mind of any photographer, uh, despite what they tell you, but there is an assumption that the photography is more important than the video. <laughs> and yeah. You know, they can tell you they don't sit think that until they're blue in the face, but I've never met anyone that uh, actually genuinely doesn't think that. So you're all jostling for time to, to, get your, to get your piece, and that makes our job harder in that respect to mm. deliver in those circumstances. And as a consequence, if you can conquer it, then you can pull out a lead over your peers. Um, and there could be an argument that that is maybe one angle that we've had is making, doing better in these difficult situations. Yeah. And the drone in a couple shoot, there's nothing more difficult than that. Yeah, um, 100%. And we still make it happen. And we have some extraordinary shots that mm. I, I don't think I've seen. Well, I don't, I've not seen every drone shot in the world, but I think we have a, our catalog of drone couple shoot shots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Is when when you see it, kind of if you saw it as a showreel, it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Anyone can take a shot of the building in the morning if you get there half an hour in advance. Fine, yeah, that's, and it's still worth doing, and it is a good way to kind of you know have chapters in your videos. But the couple shoot stuff turn the challenge into an opportunity, and that's what we kept telling ourselves mm. over the years, uh, and keep telling ourselves over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you guys make it look easy because you do have some stunning shots in your work. Thank yeah. you. Thank so, you. I hate you guys. I'm, I'm gonna take- <laughs> <laughs> but you can relate to what I'm saying. I'm going to yeah. take that as a challenge because we don't we don't utilize the drone much. That's because every we, time I, I ask you to get it, you're like, oh, but I want to get the shots that yeah. I like to get from the ground. So I'm going to take that as a challenge and be like, okay, we'll try and use it a wee bit more with a couple. <laughs> well, that's why... Because we don't use it with a couple much at all. So when, comes, nice, yeah. <laughs> when they say to us, oh, we see you've got a drone. Oh, that's awesome. Will you use that or when? We're like, yeah, if it's if it's good weather, we will. Yeah. If they've but said like, that, then I'll be like, yeah. I'm always okay. like, we don't really use it much. What? Wh- why are you so excited about seeing it in our films? Because there's maybe one shot in every other film. Like, okay, I, I, I don't know. I like, uh, I use them for tra- chapter markers. Yeah, you're right. And and if there's like, if it's like on a beach or something where there's a lot of open space, then I, then I'll then I'll use it. Yeah. Um, or on top of a mountain or something. But I'll, I'll try and let you use it more at the couple shoot. Thanks, <laughs> thanks buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. In fact, well, she's major that. stress goes to Simon. Yeah. <laughs> Greg allowed me to fly the drone in Glencoe. And I flew it because the time previous in Glencoe, he had backed into a mountain. 
<laughs> he had backed into a mountain. He didn't. He just didn't see the mountain. Do anyway, you know, I'd love to laugh my face off, but I have seen a couple of our shots where I've not been a million miles off, just flying it into a mountain. You're like, <laughs> how can I have possibly got close to a mountain? Yeah, it's yeah. A mountain and, that- and you did fly it into a tree in front of a hundred people standing there waving oh, at the drone. Wow. that's on YouTube. So. That's amazing, <laughs> is it? Oh, I'll be looking that up. Yeah. Uh, that's, I'm glad that even professionals like yourself. Have We're professionals it. as well, <laughs> and I know, I know, but we, I, like, I know how close we are, and I've seen you crash a drone and hit, a, nearly hit a boat mast and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm glad that yeah, that was you guys also do it. So it doesn't matter how <laughs> good the people are. There's all, there's always all, like, almost always going to be a crash. That's it, maybe one of the reasons I want the two pro because it's got rear sensors. <laughs> it does. It does. That, like, that would have saved me. Yeah. Yeah. To the test. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it is, so we're shooting in Glencoe um, at the... Uh, oh, what's pointy, the mountain. pointy Mountain. The Pointy Mountain. The Pointy Mountain, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. I just call it the Toblerone. But the Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm flying it and it's like on and off rain as it is a lot in Glencoe. Anyway, I'm like, right, I want to get, we're quite far from the mountain, but I want to get up close to it. So I go and I take the, I do a couple shot, I do it. And then I'm like, okay, I'll be productive and just take the drone up and get another shot. Just like you were saying. So I'm flying up and I'm like, do, 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 up. I'm like, at this point, I'm looking into the sun. The drone is like a tiny dot. And then all of a sudden it loses connection. And I'm like, oh no. And I'm I'm moving the the joystick back and forth, trying to determine which way it's facing at this point, and I completely lose it. And then it goes from beyond the sun, right in front of the mountain. I cannot see the drone yeah. because of the texture of the mountain and the drone's just a wee tiny dot. And I'm like, oh my god, I cannot see it. And obviously, time limits. It, luckily, luckily, it's an elopement, so we have the time. And the photographer's, you know, he. It was Andrew Ray. He he takes a couple down by a by by a wee stream and and does some great stuff. In the meantime, I'm like fluffing about trying to find the wee dot in the mountain. Oh my gosh, that was yeah. a nightmare. And that that was a funny a, wee glitch. It's a weird glitch that we had, really only for a couple of months. I don't know whether it was just a firmware version or something, but yeah. it cut out like that a few times. Yeah, researched it online, couldn't see much to explain what was happening or why. Don't know whether it was my phone or the drone firmware but luckily it's not happened recently since we've sort of updated it but yeah <laughs> yeah it gives you the fear when that happens oh, no. and it, that's it, the reason why mavic air um is getting a bit of a boot <laughs> because it signal after uh, yeah. yeah 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 basically Ooh. and and when you're actually shooting something if it disconnects disconnects mid shot then you, you can't, can't you don't know whether you've got the shot or you yeah. don't yeah oh, it's crazy it's pretty and, rubbish and the, the big idea you obviously like the, what people might not know is that these drones are meant to return to home in, in a situation like that they're, <laughs> they're meant to automatically yeah. have a built in fail safe so that if you yeah. do lose connection like that it just shoots up in the air and flies back and, and lands literally where it took off which does happen but we've also had similar situations where that return to home notion of return to home has not been overly uh, confidence inspiring. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, more reasons not to get a drone. <laughs> it's very stressful. <laughs> so the conclusion yeah. from this episode is just don't bother buying a drone. Just don't bother. Don't get a license because you're not going to buy one anyway. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is, is there anything else you would like to say that we've not touched on yet? And any sort of element oh hang on i did ask oh about God. a salty segment uh, did did you think of anything anything salty yeah uh, i think I, I i said something almost salty enough with regards to the photographer videographer relationship uh so we'll not go any further down that route mm. um uh, that's 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 as uh that's as salty as i think i'm prepared to go I don't know if you're going to use any of this, but we get on very well with most, if not almost all, photographers. It's just you only remember the bad ones in the yeah. same way that you only remember the bad priests and you only remember the bad MC, the guy with the red jacket yeah. that gave you hassle. And on the flip side, reason. that's why some priests are harsh on us because they only remember the bad videographers. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's like, 
We're but good. Really good ones. <laughs> We're really yeah. good guys. As a yeah, uh, hopefully functioning grown up human being who makes it from one day to the next, which I consider myself, <laughs> I've had <laughs> bad experiences with people generally. But when I meet someone new, I don't work on the assumption that they're an idiot and that I'm going to hate them. I work on the assumption that I'll give them at least. Five seconds before yeah. I judge them. <laughs> I conclude that they're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, whereas when you are met with hostility or or arrogance or whatever the case may be, um, it gets you off on the wrong foot. So we all we ask is that we are treated with the same respect from anyone that we extend to the person on the other side of the table. Um, and that doesn't always happen. But I more think often than not, it does. there's quite a lot of egos in the industry, just generally speaking. You know, it just seems to attract, well... I agree, I but know. more often than not, <laughs> it's fine. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any bad relationships with anyone? Not that we know of. They, they might not like us, but... Mm. <laughs> you don't have any... You don't go home in the car afterwards and you're just like, oh, man. No. Um, there has been over the years, I'm sure. Like, One or two... Like, it's good point, though. It's a good, it's an, oh, what yeah. that says, though, is that we need to always keep in mind that it could be us. Yeah. It could be us. It could be. And that's you mm-hmm. always have to reflect on that and then arrive at the conclusion that it can possibly be you and it's always there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you always have to question that and you know, just re- just reflect on it a little bit. Um but that's interesting. Yeah. Are you guys being PC? I'm not asking you I would never expect you. No, we're not I naming mean, names, but you're the ones concept. who are going to be editing this. <laughs> yeah. You drift through this job going ah, be- there's ah. there's certain things that other suppliers do. Or styles that just don't match with how we work. But it's not, like, people-wise, I wouldn't say there's anyone really, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't think there's anyone that we don't get on with. I think there used to be, so back in the day, when we had the cinematic style, we used to spend a lot of time with the couple, doing the couple shoot. And we used to ask to do, like, was it 50 minutes with the couple alone? Yeah. And I think... Most of the time when we would say that to a photographer, they would get defensive and be like, oh, why can't we do that? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But from our point of view, it wasn't that at all. We were we were letting them have their time and not be like annoying and buzzing around them so they could get their flow. And then we would do it because we shot quite close. And even though they would say, oh, can we get a shot? And I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. I don't think they could ever get a shot. Because I was only doing the cinematic stuff, so it was like what people, what what the couple are wearing, you know, moving around. I'm very close to them on a wide lens, you know. So to me, it didn't seem practical. But I think from their point of view, it was quite offensive. Yeah. So we've changed our shooting style slightly. I'm now more like I am doing the cinematic stuff very fast. I'm like, yeah. whenever there's an opportunity, grab the groom. Right? Can you just walk up there? And I'm I'm shooting close, but I'm like. As soon as he has the time, I'm I'm there mm-hmm. to make the most of the time. Yeah, so probably back in the day, it used to be something that photographers would be like putting their sort of, I don't know, what's that saying? Putting their, like they'd, uh, on they'd get spot? riled up before we even start working them because they'd see yeah. on the timeline that the videographer needs separate time. Mm. And they'd be like, oh, that's going to eat into our time. Yeah. Whereas nowadays we just work alongside them and... Most of the time we're working with folk we've worked with before. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I, I think because this job is so hard, I, I would rather just spend time around the people that I like and have a good banter during so the couple So would you shoot. turn down a booking because of a photographer that you might not no. want to work with? No. Well, I, there's no one that we wouldn't want to work with, I don't think. But to be honest, it's, it's more of the couple. Like, if, if it's a good couple and that's who we're going to make the film for, then it doesn't really matter who else that they've got to do other stuff. We're going to do our best for them. Would you? And, and if there's difficulties, then... Have you got a photographer that you're like, would not work with? No, no, but I've no? heard... And you, don't, heard you don't need to say any names if you do. Someone in the industry does do that. With who? With you guys? No, no, no. With, with us? With photographers. Oh, right. I have right. a videographer who, would, who has like a list of photographers well, that like they a, wouldn't work with. It's a, it, I, I have to say, I like the idea of it. Or, well, I don't think they have a list that they don't work with. They have a list that they do work with. I think that's the way... That's the... We have a list that we work with. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and actually, these days we're actually quite lucky. Um, quite a lot of the bookings come to us first, even before the photographers. So we get to recommend yeah. the photographers mm. that we love working with. Yeah, and, that, um, that must be really nice. 
Like we got one or two of those, but it's not all the time. But it does no, happen. It's always it nice when it happens. happens. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does happen a wee bit. Well, I guess um, should we do some plugs then? Yeah, tell mm-hmm. us where people can find you guys. Give a, give a full on plug for the masterclass if you want mm-hmm. for your YouTube channel for your company. Yeah, all of the plugs. Yeah, well, I'm getting a tap on the knee there because... <laughs> this uh, is you, do it. Because is, this, you've done it how many times? This happens 50? In, in every YouTube video. <laughs> <coughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that like button <laughs> exactly. down below and oh, make and a Instagram copy. Instagram as well. Oh, we're on Instagram. Oh, God, we're on so many social media things. Uh, established our wedding business as White Balloon Films and we make smooth cinematic wedding films with drone footage incorporated in the package. So that's all very nice. Uh, Whitebloomfilms.co.uk Um <laughs> <laughs> the YouTube channel uh, that we talked about, Drone Film Guide, you can just search for that and you'll find us. 57,000 subscribers, I think it is. Good going, um, So it's decent, yeah. you know, it's That's decent. Amazing. It's, it's certainly a good, it's a good base. I mean, you look at other channels that are absolutely massive and um, you know, they just move on a whole different level. But um, at the same time, 57,000 is certainly a relevant number. Um, it's it's quite a niche topic. It's a niche topic. So, <laughs> uh, it's a very niche yeah. topic. So I think it's, it's you have a choice. Do you want to... Uh, be a, a big fish in a small pond or do you want to be a tiny fish in a huge pond uh, on the assumption that you're not going to be a huge fish in that huge pond so yeah. especially when it's just a part time thing like it was when we started out so mm-hmm. so we've got a wee thing going on there and, and the uh, master class oh the master class yes of course and if you do watch any of our videos you will not miss the fact that we have <laughs> eight hour drone cinematography master class where we take you from drone owner to drone pilot to drone cinematographer in the most immersive enjoyable and cinematic way possible eight hours of drone education we would highly recommend that you check it out as we think you'll find it very interesting indeed mm-hmm. we recommend that too <laughs> <laughs> very is, good is that is that all the plugs? We have your- an Instagram page for <laughs> Balloon Film Guide. And White Balloon Films. And White Balloon Films, but no one looks at that, so let's not talk about that. So the, the Drone Film Guide one <laughs> is more interesting. We also yep. have a business called Captain Cornelius. Oh, yes. If you need a promo video, we can make a promo video for you, or a music video as well. And we do lots of handheld in this video. <laughs> so. Yeah. so is that at Drone Film Guide on Instagram? It, it is at Drone Film Guide. Um, and Instagram, I have to say, is not something that we are that great at, but we are finding that it is quite a useful platform. Um, you guys are doing quite well on Instagram. Yeah, you guys have been pushing we're, it. We're uh, trying. Are much more it's all nice. Greg. It's all yeah. Greg. What do you do? It's hard work. <laughs> Literally <Exactly>. nothing. <laughs> He's the ideas guy. <laughs> no, I, just, I just make the films. That's, that's all I do. That's what I spend literally every waking minute of my life doing. Make it wedding films. Yeah. To do most editing then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do all. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Can then. we hire you? <laughs> <laughs> if I had time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. No, yeah, thank chat. you very much. Us. Thank you. I hope you found some interesting nuggets of information in that uh, definitely discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I think everyone listening will also agree. <laughs> you've been listening to Perspective, a podcast for wedding creatives. We hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you did. Hit that subscribe button so that you know the next time an episode goes online. Leave a review. That's a massive help. And spread the word by telling a friend. But until next time, enjoy your life. <laughs>